Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of All Things IDA. In today's episode, we're going to talk how to debug remote threads using IDA and IDA's debuggers. We'll try to keep it short. We assume that you know about thread creation and whatnot. I'll try to cover some background information. Okay, so let's get started. To illustrate how to debug remote threads, I'm going to be using this test program. Now, this is not a malicious program, but in reality, malicious programs will have similar pieces of code where you're going to employ create remote thread API to run code in another process. In fact, the difference between create thread and create remote thread is very minimal with respect to the API signature. The only difference is remote thread takes the handle to the target process where we're going to be executing code at this start address, passing this and the remaining as well act as if we're creating a regular thread. The difference here as well per the documentation it says create a thread that runs in the virtual space other space of another process. So when we pass start address which is the thread procedure and the parameters this will be in the context of the remote thread. So we have to copy some code or specify start address in the remote process that we know we can execute. People use create remote thread for example for DLL injection and the start address is directly specified to be load library for example and the parameters would be the library to load for example. But we can really create any remote thread with any pieces of code and execute it remotely as long as we open the process write process memory to allocate our custom code and also to write the data that accompanies our remote code so this test program we can use it to issue a remote copy api call in the context of another process so i'm gonna be using notepad as the victim and uh, imagine that this is a malicious program and this is high value program say your browser or some some process that contains secrets and the ability to execute code inside another process is useful so we want to debug that first thing in this test program i just need to specify the victim so here i'm going to be using notepad executable which is running uh, we found its pid behind the scenes is gonna open process then what's the source pass where do we want to copy so let's suppose i want to copy hello.py into hello2.py now remember this is going to be copied in the context of notepad so it's notepad who's going to issue an api code this is just preparatory so this test program will have the proper shell code or piece of code and its arguments ready and remotely copied to the target process and executed in that process which means we have to attach a debugger to that target program our victim and then that's where we can debug the remotely created thread. So first thing is, if we have a database for our target, we can use it. If not, we can simply start either with no database, attach. If you're using a remote debugger, that's fine. In this case, I'm only doing local debugging and the program we're gonna attach to is Notepad. And I just let it resume a bit. And we can then do the most important step here is enable the following option here, suspend on thread start and exit this will give us a chance to break into the target program as soon as a thread is started or is exiting and so we will use this to capture the remote thread before it executes so we get to see what is the thread procedure start address and what's the data that's being passed what are the arguments in reality whether it's a regular thread or remote thread they both take the start routine which is a simple function takes a single argument since we're looking at 64-bit program right now we can expect the arguments to be in rcx rdx r8 r9 and the registers first and then on the stack so that's why as you see next i'm going be inspecting the registers to capture those remote thread arguments now that we enable this option we get a suspension that's fine this is probably an operating system just creating threads ui threads and so on we can ignore it will settle down eventually but for now we enable the suspend on thread start or exit let's trigger that event in the victim program and analyze what's going to happen and how does this remote copy functionality work so we're ready to trigger it all i have to do now is press enter and this this will now initiate a create remote thread and hopefully we can see what kind of code is going to be executing inside notepad so let this program run and here we are we broke because of a thread being created and this is how ida shows us that this is the active thread this is the selected thread we can always change thread context so we can switch to another thread by simply double clicking or pressing enter and i'm in another another thread's context different registers and so on so let's go back to this one 
on Windows, when we create a thread, this is what the kernel will issue from the user mode. This is what will be dispatching our user procedure. So first it goes to NTDLL, NTDLL will dispatch that. So to make our life easy, let's load symbols for this DLL. And we can see here, it's really a short function. So let's make a function here. We are not going to be studying how NTDLL works. And so we're going to minimize this work. Eventually, we can trace. It's a simple function. So we can see where it goes. But I can tell you that this one receives two arguments. So they're going to be in RCX, RDX. RCX is going to point to the remote procedure. So here to us in that suspended state inside RTL user thread start, we will receive a first argument to that internal function, the thread, the threads start address. And in RDX, so RCX is the first one, we're going to receive those two in RCX and RDX. So here is sufficient for me if I just simply jump to that register by pressing here or typing go to RCX. And here we are, I'm inside some debug segment. And so we know debug segment is usually something that has been dynamically allocated and does not belong to a module. We can check if this is valid or not by looking if this segment has the executable bit. So we can press Ctrl S within anywhere within that segment. And here we have, this is an execute, read execute. We're on the right track. We can make code here. And let's make a function as well. Since this is a function, we know what's going to be the prototype of this remote thread. It's going to be of this form. We should be able to change the prototype of this one. Although this is really not necessary. Let's see, did I load the type info? So as well, we have to make sure since I attached, I have to make sure I have the right compiler and also the proper type information. This should be good enough Windows 10 x64 SDK. By doing that now, Ida would know what is the word and so on. Fast call. So that is the remote thread procedure that we are looking to analyze. We can now put a breakpoint here and just let it run. Eventually, this one will call it and pass both. RCX will be called and it will receive the parameter. Since this function takes a single parameter, this here, this function will call the thread procedure and pass the single argument into RCX. But from this perspective, the arguments is in RDX. So for this function here, let's change the prototype. This one should be, let's say, the thread procedure. Let's just make it a pointer, thread proc. And let's make this. This is the actual params. So RCX is the function and RDX are the parameters. And as well, this is another debug segment. It should not be executable. So there's no point. It should be just maybe read only or read write. Let's press Control S. And here it's a read write segment. Maybe it's read write because the caller, so whoever issued the remote thread, this program, may want to get read back some stuff remotely as well to get the result if it's successful or not. So we don't have to trace it until we see RTL user thread start is going to dispatch. We know where, where eventually will be called. So let's just let it run and it will break in our thread procedure, which is in a debug segment. So that means before a thread has been created, write process memory has been issued first to write this code and second to write the parameters which is going to be passed in RCX here. So what are we looking at? If we call this params, we can see here params is being used as a pointer first then it's displaced by some offset and then another displacement as well another displacement. So there's clearly some data structure in question here. I will show you what we're dealing with. So let me explain the source code. But that's it. We are in notepad. We are in the remote thread. We suspend it and we know what's going to happen eventually this piece of code will take place. But let's take a look at the source code. So how does a remote copy work? It's very simple. First thing is we find the process by name to get the PID and then we issue a helper method called remote copy file. Remote copy file gets the PID and some arguments. Eventually the PID will be opened, we'll get the process handle and eventually as well a remote thread will be created. All this logic is hidden behind this method which is simply executes remote code. It does take a process ID, the local code in your current process that you want to execute remotely. Some sides we cannot tell in C++ how big is a function. So I'm assuming we have let's say one page or 4k. It doesn't matter. We copy this method. So this method here is very simple. That's what we are looking at in IDA. So this function 
is exactly this remote procedure that we're going to be executing. And the structure that's being passed is called remote copy file. And all it does is it is being initialized from the issuing process. That structure is populated by the address of copy file, the source file and destination we're copying, and as well as one more argument to the copy file API. So when we do that with the execute remote, the code will be copied as well. The data will be copied all to the remote process and a create remote thread will happen. So if we take a quick look here, we can see the sequence of events the malicious program will open process into the victim it will allocate memory using allocate ex to allocate in a remote process it will then copy the user data from the malicious program which is this program supposedly remotely so our pointers local pointers so the pointer to the data in our malicious program is not going to be the same pointer value in the remote process so when we do virtual alloc ex we're allocating in the target we get some other address and then we use write process memory to copy from our process to the the destination and then also we allocate executable code for the actual thread procedure and also we copy it to the target process and finally we issue the create remote thread with the remote start address that we copied using write process memory with the data that we also copied using write process memory and once we create the thread we get a thread handle we can wait for the thread handle we wait for it to finish and if we want some results we can read back the results from the same remote data and when we're done we have to clean up so we have to free the code data and the actual uh, data passed to the code so we need to free the remote procedure the remote thread start procedure and also the data that we passed to it so we clean up then we close the remote thread handle and this is a good cleanup so in reality the code that we are going to be debugging is this function but let's copy the structure out of it so let's go to ida and we're going to fix this is not the right structure format let's just simply open the local types window paste this one we still need the prototype for this one here let's just copy it see if that works and now I have all the structures I need let's see okay so let me simplify this for now you just make the function just avoid pointer it's fine and we need to synchronize this if we want to look at it in the disassembly view so we can double click for example this is the right structure so either guessed correctly I guess there's a function pointer here so function pointer they didn't guess 100% about two separate source and destination it guessed the last field correctly as well at 418 so we cannot really blame it it saves us a lot of time so here now in my thread procedure i can simply change this to the proper type and here i reveal that copy file is being issued and that's the whole of the remote procedure now it could be more complicated than that doesn't matter the key thing is we enabled in the debugger this and once we hit the RTL function in NTDLL, we simply located the arguments passed to it, which is RCX is the procedure address and RDX is the data. It's sufficient for us to simply capture the code location. Once we put the breakpoint, eventually we, somebody will call us. We can inspect the data anyway. So it's just enough for us to get the code at the RTL function. And once we put the breakpoint, that's what the shell code that's being executed or the remote thread code that's being executed. So here, for example, this is of type this. So here is a structure offset. This is destination file. This is the source file. This is the fail if exit. And RAX is actually the copy file address. So let's single step a bit and follow this one. So this is the pointer. This, this is, uh, we're dereferencing the pointer. This one is of type remote copy. Let's make those as strings. So let's try Unicode string and this one as well. And this is slightly better. We can see here the whole buffer of the source file and the destination. And remember, this has been copied remotely from this program's address space to Notepad's address space. So these are the arguments. We passed the function we want to call and we passed the pointer to the remote process. Now, this only works if we're getting function pointers to common DLLs because they're mapped similarly between processes just for performance issues. So NTDLL in one process has the same base as in another process. Process. and now uh, we are using that fact so a pointer of to copy file has been populated in the test program when we did the remote copy the first thing we did here in the data dot copy file we put the procedure address of copy file w 
So if we want to improve this, for example, we can follow it and also just rename this to known name so copy file this is the prototype we can use this one we have two methods to improve this so one method is we can use the coli so we can go to here and say change the coli address alt f11 and we simply type the name of the api which exists we renamed it and by doing that here you notice what we did ida now knows exactly what we're calling and we'll see rcx is the first argument existing file name and the fail if exists so rcx rtx and r8 these are the three arguments copy file will execute now whether it succeeded or not we will tell eventually so here it did succeed and that's it so it will return the value from the thread procedure so a thread procedure returns a value and we're gonna use this to tell if copy file succeeded or not in the test program they're retrieving the error code from the thread exit code so when we do the remote copy so here remote copy we are basically getting the exit code of the thread so our remote procedure simply returns true or false based on if copy file succeeds or not and we can the mesh program can tell whether the remote execution happened successfully or not so that's it basically then we should expect that when the thread exits this debug segment will no longer exist just because our program will clean up everything as we said it will start to free both memory pages the code and the data and so that's it let's take a look if hello has been copied to hello 2 indeed hello has been copied to hello 2 so mission accomplished so to recap real quick we identified let's say a malicious program that we know is gonna use create remote thread we know what's the victim we attach to the victim enable suspend on thread start or exit we will eventually break on ntdll rtl user thread start this will receive two arguments rcx rtx will be pointing to the code and the data respectively so the threads is start address and the threads is parameters once we know those we can follow the thread procedure and start analyzing it with the disassembler or the decompiler so that's it for today i hope you found this useful and i'll see you next time thank you